Alrighty, y'all. Sunday night prep. So the market uh, was pretty interesting last week. Uh, in retrospect, I don't think it was as bad as it looks. So, you know, looking at daily structure versus weekly structure, um, SPY versus Qs, the SPY looks pretty phenomenal here. Now, we did close under the daily one, uh, the daily 21. And remember, anytime we're below the daily 21, there's definitely room for more downside. And typically, you're going to see the market bounce back up to the mean. And until we can start closing back above it, it tend to roll right back over. So, you know, do take into consideration we are below the 21 period EMA for both of the indexes. Until we can get those solid closes back above, be a little bit careful about getting too aggressive and too ballsy to the upside. Um, I think moving forward over the next handful of weeks, we could see just that kind of nasty game of back and forth where the market rolls over two plus ATR to the downside and then we rip right back here to the 21. But until you can get the solid closes back above the mean, you tend to kind of roll right back over to show you a visual reference, you know, kind of something like this over here. You get the ugly push under the 21, and typically that ugly push is going to be about 2 ATR to the downside. So if you throw up our trusty Keltner channel measuring 2 ATRs on the 21, it's typically what you get. The big violent dump to the downside, and then a quick rip right back to the mean. You can't close above the 21 right back down, uh, and just a whole bunch of back and forth until ultimately we can survive and find a little bit of support there. So that's where you got to be a little bit careful about your timing in this market. As far as those bigger picture long-term swings, your best bet is to wait for VIX to die back down and for the indexes to start closing back above the 21. For the call it Monday through Friday kind of trading, you know, focus on that structure. A really crappy... Uh, <laughs> spot to get short is two plus ATRs to the downside. You know, so personally, I wouldn't want to be going into Monday or Tuesday session heavily short because we already made the average move. So I think there's a good chance here we could see the market into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, ripping right back to the 21, uh, and then we'll see where we go from there. So just be a little bit careful. This typically is where you want to lock your gains on your short positions, and then you can look to play the market long on the rally back to the 21, uh, and if you close back above the mean, maybe you're working back towards the upside. Otherwise, you tend to roll right back over. So if you look at the futures, uh, pretty nice move so far. A long time here till the open. But the Qs are up about 1%. So you get that 21 EMA sitting right above as the big target. And obviously, technology was uh, way weaker last week than the SPY. So the SPY is already getting pretty close back to the 21 uh, and that was what was pretty interesting, is the S&P 500 held up really damn good last week, mainly due or completely due to the game of rotation. So big institutions, they're selling their technology positions, they're selling their semiconductor positions, they were selling their holdings in utility stocks, but they was buying the financials up until Friday. They were buying energy stocks up until Friday. They were buying transport stocks, same thing. So, you know, we did see that game of rotation. And from a weekly perspective, um, you know, here's why I think last week might have felt a little bit worse than it was. Looking from a weekly charts perspective, uh, let's pull up the SPY here. We are still in a bullish uptrend. We closed right near that AEMA. And truthfully, we could even dump even further all the way down here to that weekly 21. And I think as long as you're holding above the mean, you got a bullish structure. Here's why I think technology is going to be really interesting. If we look at last week's action, we pulled right back towards that weekly 21, and we held up really well. So time will tell. And I think you know, there's no need to rush into decisions here. Potentially, the little bit of volatility and the softness that we saw last week could have led here to one of the best dip opportunities that we're going to get in all of 2021 if we do put in a bottom sometime soon and we do turn the corner. Reason being is that with the volatility in the market, we've got some names that have really come back down to earth. The NVIDIAs, the Teslas, etc. So i got a couple names on the focus list we'll cover here in a second. But there's definitely that potential in the midst of all this volatility Come end of March, April, May, we could be looking back at this and saying, geez, 
what a freaking dip opportunity that was. Or if we begin to see the indexes trading below the weekly 21, truthfully, it could be a total shift in momentum. So big picture thinking out into end of March, April, May, I think we got a bullish structure here. And I think if the indexes can hold up above their weekly 21, I got a good feeling we could see the market trading back at new highs again come end of March, April, May. In the short term, until volatility completely dies back down and until these indexes are trading back above the 21, just kind of pick your spots wisely. You want to look to see, get the cues back up, uh, just a good chart to study. Get a daily chart and get your Keltner channels and measure two ATR from the 21 period EMA. So here's the settings. <sighs> There's those bad boys right there. But yeah, it's such an important chart to study. You know, for the same reasons, uh, we're going to have a tough time trying to tra uh, create you know, consistent results getting long at two plus ATRs. That's typically not the best idea because of the growing probability we're going to pull back to the mean. It's also not the best idea to be trying to short the market heavily once we've already dropped two to three ATRs lower. So just pick your spots wisely. If we do get back above the 21, everything kind of dusts off this recent volatility. Hey, we could be right back to business. In the meantime, look for the quick rip back to the mean. Look for the rejection for another move to the downside. Just about two or so ATRs before another rip higher. All right. Now let's get to what, let's be honest. This is what you're all watching for is the setups. So with the little bit of pukage in the market, uh, I'm actually, let's see, weekly chart. All right, we got a weekly chart. I mean, check this out. This is awesome. Before the market had a little bit of volatility here, NVIDIA is looking like it's going to take off towards that 650, 700. Pulls back with the market, and I think this is probably uh, one heck of a gift here. Right back at the weekly 21, and you got a bullish structure still. Stack moving averages, green 10x bars in the weekly, above the 21, Keep in mind, if the market rolls over here into March, April, May, I'm just probably going to do the very same. But if we do put in the bottom sometime soon, I do like the odds here of NVIDIA trading higher over the next 60 plus days. And a weekly squeeze is the perfect kind of setup to begin to build a position in. So I already have one put credit spread here for April expiration. I would love to add another put credit spread. But here's the thing. It's a weekly squeeze. So... The Monday through Friday, the daily charts, the 30 minutes, they're going to be pretty choppy. Build a position, get plenty of time to the expiration, and hold on tight and ignore the chop, I think as long as NVIDIA is trading above 510. I think you need to be willing to sit through some of that noise to ultimately get rewarded over the next handful of weeks to months here. I think a really solid setup, one I'm definitely going to look to add a little bit more exposure to. So I did post a trade in the Simpler Options Room last week. We did start to build a position here in Netflix. Uh, ugly week across the board for a lot of different sectors, especially these tech names, the FANG stocks, with the exception of Netflix and Google, both of which we took a little bit of a nibble in here. So Netflix, beautiful weekly squeeze, all the way back to the 21, beautiful bounce, stack moving averages, green 10x bars on the weekly, bullish histogram, so we've got to put credit spread here for April expiration. If the market rolls over from here, Netflix probably going with it. If the market rallies over the next handful of months, it's this kind of structure with a squeeze on a leading name, yada, yada, uh, that should lead to higher prices. So we got ourselves a little bit of Netflix there. And then for a shorter term swing, mainly looking for the cues to rip back to that 21 early this week, we did take a position here in Google. So just before the close there on Friday, I sent out an alert for Google, and we have a put credit spread here for this coming Friday's expiration. Before the market volatility and after the market volatility, Google's been looking phenomenal. Stack moving averages, you got green 10x bars all across the board, and unlike Amazon, Apple, and Facebook, it held the bullish structure all week long. This looks awesome. Holds up here at the 21, you got lower time frame squeezes. So we sold an at the money put credit spread, looking for a little bit of momentum to the upside early in the week. Of course, 
it's going to come down to what the indexes do. So this is mainly a play here looking for tech to rally back to its 21. Should we get a move at least even halfway towards the 21? I think you see Google make a quick rip and maybe looking to buy back that put credit spread for a nice 50% of max profit or so. So a little short-term trade. We'll see how that goes here. And a couple more I want to share with you all. So I like the NVIDIA squeeze. Uh, I'm still holding on to my Amazon put credit spreads. So they're in the hole at the moment. But over the last handful of weeks, I think uh, I'll have to do the exact math. But long story short, I've been selling some call credit spreads over the last handful of weeks. And I have covered a really good chunk of the max potential loss on the Amazon put credit spreads. So I've done a good job here kind of managing the risk and the downside. And Amazon's really going to depend on the overall market. Uh, this weekly squeeze, we still have our stack moving averages. Still got a green 10x bar. No bearish momentum. But trading under the weekly 21 uh, does leave a little bit to be desired. So I'm going to be patient. And I do love the squeeze here. But at some point, if we start dumping under 2,900, uh, clearly this swing trade isn't working. So up until this point, Amazon's been my most rewarding move of the year, collecting some nice put premium. But as we're rolling into the March and April expirations, we'd like to see something get going here back towards the upside. So keep an eye on Amazon. And I think another name that looks super solid here coming into the week is going to be DraftKings. DraftKings got a nice looking daily squeeze and then a really weak market. I hate to use the term really weak because in all reality, the market wasn't that weak last week. But in a choppy, volatile market, DraftKings held up awesome. So you're above your 21 on the daily inside the squeeze. And check out the nice-looking four-hour squeeze here as well. No position as of yet, but I would like to take a look at some DraftKings there tomorrow. So for those of you in the simpler room, we'll be taking a look. And now check out MasterCard and Visa. Again, during the volatile week for the market, you want to look for stocks that A, either held up really well, or B, kind of outperformed. Visa and MasterCard are two examples. Good looking daily squeezes. And you got a couple of the beautiful three day squeezes and drum roll weekly squeezes here as well. So across the board for Visa and MasterCard, you got a really good bullish structure with squeezes on multiple time frames. Ultimately, going to depend on where the indexes go from here. If the mama market, the spy in the queues, does end up pumping itself back towards some new highs, into the end of March, into April, into May, these kinds of structures, these kinds of setups, we want to be looking to lead to higher prices. So no position as of yet in MasterCard and Visa in the simpler room. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on that one. And a few more here for y'all before I send you on your way. I think Fetch, F-T-C-H, beautiful three-day squeeze back here in uh, you know, the fall leads to a beautiful move to the upside. And now here's another great looking three day squeeze. So one on my radar, would like to start looking to build the position sometime soon. And now for a couple of potential pullback trades. And I'll leave you all with this, JMIA. I would like to begin to pick some up here for April, May expiration. If we do begin to find support above the weekly 50 period or the weekly 21 period, uh, EMA. So a nice pullback to the weekly 21, I think, is solid in the stock and a solid uptrend. Going to keep my eye on it. Nothing to do, I think, as of yet. But if you're bullish on the overall market and uh, you're bullish on this stock here in particular, a pullback to the weekly 21 is a beautiful thing. And it's a thing that doesn't come around all that often. For Roku, um, I would be a big time buyer of Roku down at 350 near the weekly 21. Not sure if we're going to get that move, but if we did get that move, I would certainly be a buyer there. Three-day chart holding up at its own 21, and on the daily chart here, uh, you know, this is where things are a little, little bit ugly. No stack moving averages under the 8, under the 21, under the 50 bearish histogram. The ugliness of the daily chart, maybe, 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 if we can flush underneath support here, we could get that move down on the 350. Uh, and down to 350, I'm going to have some alerts set. I will be more than happy to start selling some put credit spreads uh, for April expiration. So I got my eyes on Roku. And then last but not least here, FSLY. Or kind of a, 
Let's see the three day chart. All right, there's nothing attractive on the three day. There's nothing all that attractive about that daily chart. And on the weekly, you have pulled back all the way to the 50 period simple moving average inside of a bullish weekly squeeze. So every other time frame here looks pretty ugly other than the weekly. Now it only looks decent with the reference here of the 50 period simple moving average holding as support, but you do have stack moving averages. You do got green 10x bars. And I mean, if you're kind of, you know, this is a name that you like to, uh, to... yeah, the daily is ugly. But um, if this is a stock that, you know, you think has the potential to be higher over the next 60, 90, 120 days, I mean, what a spot that potentially, if the index is put in a bottom, start to nibble it a little bit, which is certainly something I'm going to entertain. So that's my focus list. A couple of the squeezes, a couple of the pullback opportunities. I covered what I think we should keep an eye on, big picture-wise for the overall market, as well as what to expect as far as the potential ups and downs here over the next handful of days, handful of weeks. Uh, but it shall be interesting. So the main thing I'll be looking at here kind of into tomorrow's session is do we make a move back up towards the 21 EMA on both the indexes? And if and once we do, do we get stuffed or do we continue to make a move higher? So we will see. But as always, I appreciate y'all watching. It's going to be a little bit of a long one, clocking in at about 17 minutes right now. So if you've made it from beginning to end, I appreciate the hard work you're putting in. And I look forward to talking to y'all soon. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. You can check out the description of the video for my Twitter, my Instagram, and of course, you can trade live with me Monday through Friday in the Simpler Trading Options Room. Till next time, peace out, trade safe, talk to you soon.